Hello, today's review was unavoidable. I already reviewed first of these two brothers, uh, Campfire Audio Satsume, and of course uh, now it's time to review the Honeydew. Satsume was a single uh, balanced armature and uh, Honeydew is single dynamic driver. B uh, besides this difference in uh, drivers and of course in sound, they are the same. Similar shells, accessory set, package and so on. But price is a bit higher here, it costs 250 dollars, probably dynamic drivers cost a bit more. And of course uh, it's also interesting because Campfire Audio never released affordable single dynamic drivers before. They have a few models in a much uh, higher segment, Vega, uh, Atlas and uh, Lyra, but this is their entry to the affordable dynamic driver segment and we see that uh, recently dynamic drivers is a pretty interesting topic so let's uh, find out what campfire audio decided to do here package is traditional it's also uh, minty green same design same color everything is similar and also inside there is a bit less orange bit more yellowish box so they probably trying to uh, create the similar the color similar to the original fruits they are referenced in the names inside there is a case actually a bit uh, pale shade of green and box with accessory set and uh, manual with warranty card so 17.68 millivolts RMS, so they end 17.44 ohms of impedance. So dynamic driver model is more sensitive. And also 5 Hz, 18 kilohertz of uh, uh, frequency response. In the case, as you can probably expect, you'll find the Honeydew themselves. Here they are. And in the box, two additional pouches with all the accessories. Absolutely similar to the uh, Satsume, but if someone sk skipped previous review, I will repeat it. So cleaning tool, uh, final audio type E-tips uh, booklet. Here foam tips, three pairs, single flange silicones also three pairs so let me put it aside and here five pair of final audio type e silicon tips and of course signature pin i think everyone buying this model just to get this pin i think that Final audio tips are the best ones, but of course it's a matter of taste here. Also two traditional stripes of velcro to hold the cable. Let's put them aside too. And here they are. Similar to the Satsume, uh, shells are made of plastic, but this time they are a bit uh, more pale in, in terms of color. A uh, bit less orange and a bit more yellowish. And also you can see here small vent holes on the face plates. Besides that design is absolutely similar. Li really lightweight uh, shells fitting nicely into ears. Well, uh, good ergonomic shape. All edges are smoothed and shells it themselves are a bit smaller than uh, Campfire Audio did uh, previously. So they will fit nicely into ears, they, will, uh, they are really comfortable in wearing. And bores and spouts made of metal with good level of manufacturing, with nice uh, interesting grill, lip for holding the tip, so all that uh, stuff is done on a really good level. The holding the tips really well, sound isolation is above average, not by much, but still uh, above average, and good comfort and uh, pretty nice uh, build quality, of course, uh, what we can expect. Uh, cables are made replaceable, here used MMCX connectors, pretty tightly fitting, so they require some force to be put to disconnect them and they click back and snap uh, pretty well. 
Cable was developed specially for the Satsuma and Honeydew. It's based on the Campfire Audio signature Smoky Leads, but uh, uh, they re uh, developed a bit more light version. They called it Smoky Light. Small uh, ear hooks uh, that totally reduce the microphonic effect. And a pretty soft, uh, lightweight cable, almost not getting hard when it's cold. Tangle proof, looks uh, pretty nice, uh, fancy, nothing stellar in terms of uh, outlook, but really good in terms of usability. Soft and after the splitter goes braided to the angled jack, so in this aspect it done nicely. Really comfortable cable that is pleasure to use. So as you can see in terms of design and exterior and other stuff, earphones are done on a really good level. And of course about the sound, I gave them about 40 hours of traditional burn-in and there were slight changes in sound, but only during first couple of hours. So in my opinion there is not much sense in spending dedicated time to burn them in, so just start listening to them and they will burn in right in, in this process. Uh, you need to find the proper tips as usual, but with single dynamic drivers it's most important. And let's have a player on the table. Once again it will be iBuzz or DX300. And uh, in terms of sound actually it's uh, pretty simple. Campfire Audio created uh, bass head, bass heavy model. Uh, low frequencies here are boosted and it's uh, about uh, 20 decibels of boost. And uh, this boost is pretty extended, it ex extends over the lower part of mids, so bass is heavy heating, big, it goes deep, uh, it has a good uh, weight, so everything that you can expect from a big dynamic driver bass. It's not super fast, but it's not of course uh, super bloated or super uh, muddy, it's just... Uh, a matter of weight, when you have a weighty big bass, it's just dominating over the lower part of spectrum and it's not unavoidable. It's basically impossible to create a bass heavy models that uh, won't shadow mid frequencies. But resolution is pretty nice for a dynamic driver, of course, uh, not at the flagship level like uh, Atlas for example, but still good resolution, nice texturing, uh, but main target here of course is electronic music. It uh, plays uh, acoustic instruments uh, more or less realistic, but it definitely exaggerates their size because of the boosted low frequencies, they seem bigger, more forward and more uh, hyper realistic and more accented. And uh, electronic music is nice, good rumble, good amount of resonance, nice uh, sense of uh, shaking deep uh, bass. Pop music is nice, so it's definitely a model created for those who like uh, bass heavy tuning. And it delivers it uh, at a pretty nice level. And uh, as an example, here is Prodigy, Mindfields, nice uh, resonating low frequencies, that uh, sense of shaking in your ears. This maybe it's not the heaviest heating model, but definitely one of the most heavy heating that I've heard. To be honest, it's not my tuning, but I think that uh, many people will like that, and actually more. Uh, this model will get more fans than a Satsume. But maybe I'm just wrong here and I'm uh, overestimating the amount of uh, bass head tuning lovers. Mid frequencies, uh, basically lower part is a bit behind the bass, but it still has a normal resolution thanks to dynamic driver's nature. And it's just a good dynamic driver, so normal resolution, but of course not going into the micro details, not trying to deliver, to highlight the small nuances. At the same time, of course, a bit boosted dynamics, added weight, beast, bit boosted emotions, so fun dynamic driver type of tuning. Upper part of mids are slightly boosted to create a contrast, so female vocals have a nice... Uh, uh, a, a bit of nice added sparkle, but uh, not too much and uh, still it's uh, just a dynamic drivers in terms of resolution, so if you need 
more resolving sound Satsuma is for you. But it's uh, pretty coherent in terms of tuning and the, such uh, representation of mid frequencies uh, uh, stays in tune with the overall sound spectrum. And what is what surprised me here, actually it builds a pretty decent imaginary stage. Uh, for me it's even a bit better than Satsuma does. It's uh, above average, not hugely, but still above average, and that surprised me. So it surprised me because you know, for me, usually warm and bass-heavy models are sounding narrower and intimate, but not in this case. They build a pretty nice stage. Uh, width is better than depth, but depth layering is also nice. And uh, traditionally, for many campfire audio dynamic driver models, they uh, uh, move uh, vocals a bit forward, uh, giving a bit of artificial depth to the stage. And uh, as an example, I selected another track with signature bass guitar riff, Queen's Under Pressure, but of course uh, it's here because of main guitar part and vocal. Vocal is, as I've said, is boosted a bit forward and it has a bit of add additional weight of course not 100 uh, percent pristine freddie mercury's vocal but still sounding pretty nice and thanks to this boost and forwardness sounds engaging but of course the main uh, spice here is bass guitar line steel and uh, treble is also slightly boosted uh, typical dynamic drivers a bit uh, slower attacks and decays, meaning a bit of additional weight on treble. Extension is slightly above average. Normal resolution, not super fast, but normal in terms of resolution. Slightly boosted, but uh, not too much. Just to compensate the low frequencies, but uh, it's uh, below the base. Base, so they didn't create absolutely V-shaped signature. It's like V with right uh, part below the left one, but still enough to uh, balance sound a little bit to, to play to play basic overtones and other stuff. Of course, don't expect audiophilia clearing or something like that. It's not the model for that. It's just the model for those who like mighty bass and of pretty normal representation of mid, mids and treble. So it's type of bass head tuning where creators didn't sacrifice all other parts of sonic spectrum. And uh, as an example for the treble, I've got uh, Eric Serra, the big blue soundtrack, so great movie and soundtrack played vital role here and created the atmosphere of that uh, track, of that movie. And track is sailing to death, uh, so a lot of synthesizers, a lot of airy effects, uh, that sense of underwater sound and this uh, model plays it nicely, so uh, really good performance for such tracks. And in terms of pairing, they are pretty universal, you can use them with almost anything, but of course uh, it's better to avoid over boosted uh, bass and uh, warmer sources. But if you like uh, boost the low frequencies here to maximum, it could be a nice option anyway. In terms of uh, comparisons, to be honest, uh, I don't see much sense because it's one of the bass heaviest models in this range. Uh, I don't remember the models with similar amount of low frequencies. For example, Eco OH10, my another pretty bassy model, still has a bit less low frequencies here than this model does. So basically, you know, the only model to compare is Atlas or uh, Lira 2, so uh, Campfire Audio high end dynamic drivers. But uh, they are more expensive, more resolving, uh, bit more natural, with better treble performance, so it's a step forward. So the only model that I can probably recall here, it's uh, Periodic Audio Carbon, and they have a pretty similar signature. Carbon is a bit uh, more detailed on the lower mids, but this one has a bit uh, better tuned treble, and of course uh, they are cheaper. And of build quality is not comparable at all, but that's Campfire Audio. So, if you need some comparisons, just feel free to ask. But to be honest, it's just a really basic model, and 
Uh, I, I, all other models usually have less bass and that's the main difference here. So, Campfire Audio did an interesting experiment. Uh, we'll see if my uh, prediction will become true, but still I think that uh, many people will like this fun and bassy sound. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention and of course have a nice day.